here's what I've learned recently, yesterday. Uh, so, remember that story when uh, the, the Ark had been captured by the Philistines? And uh, the, the Philistines put it in the, the Temple of Dagon, and uh, Dagon fell flat, flat on his face uh, in front of the, the Ark of the Covenant. And then the next night, uh, the, his head and his hands had been cut off. Uh, the NIV says broken off, but the ESV says cut off, as if they were uh, attacked by a weapon, uh, some kind of uh, chainsaw or some kind of, uh, you know, sword or something. And then I looked up in Hebrew, and uh, Hebrew is more likely than not cut off instead of broken off. So the... And then they tried taking uh, the Ark to Gath, and they took the Ark to uh, other city. I think it was... Uh, I... Holy sword and fire! <laughs> That's right. Uh, so... Anyway, they... they no Philistine city would uh, wanted to, to keep this Ark of the Covenant. So he said, okay, how are we going to send this back? How are we going to... And there were plagues. They were being besieged by plagues of tumors. And I think they, there were rats as well. So they were done. They, they had enough of this and had to go back to the Israelites and they said, okay, all right. So maybe all of this, all of this, uh, these plagues and these tumors, maybe it was all a coincidence. Maybe it was all uh, not from the God of Israel. Maybe it was someone else. So here's what we'll do. We'll hitch it up to a wagon and we'll put uh, on this wagon two milk cows. So I, the first time I heard this story, my memory, uh, no one was supposed to touch the ark at all. Yes, exactly. So, uh, the first time I heard this story, in my memory, uh, thought it was two bulls. And, uh, you know, bulls are used to pulling things, so they just put it on the, the cart with these bulls. It was not bulls. They were milk cows. These were female cows that had just calved. So, uh, if you have, if, if you know anything about cows, uh, dairy cows that have just calved, uh, they're not going to leave their calves. As a matter of fact, they penned up the calves. Uh, if, if you want to read this whole thing, uh, let's see. First Samuel 5. This, these are the notes I took from First Samuel 4 and 5 and 6. Here we go. Uh, dairy cows are very well treasured. Oh, also, uh, it was a gift. Dairy cows are very well treasured in this time and place because uh, milk was hard to come by. Uh, the land of milk and honey was someplace that, uh, you know, that, that was like heaven on earth. Uh, that, what, a land with actual milk and actual honey? Uh, so dairy cars were hard to come by. The cows, along with the gold rats and tumors, are a gift to Yahweh. Um, also, they sent the they sent the, the Ark to Gath. Goliath was from Gath. And Goliath, in his youth, would have remembered, I remember you Israelites, you sent your Ark of the Covenant to Gath, and we all had tumors. I will come out at you. You will hear from me later. Um, let's see. I said that. ESV says cut off, and NIV says broken off. Uh, this is more consistent with ancient Hebrew. According to Don, oh, according to John Dillon, uh, a podcast I listened to, cutting off the hands was an 
ancient practice of proving a warrior has defeated his enemy. So, you, know, you would cut off the, the head of the enemy king and the hands, and uh, it, that was proof that you had defeated that king and that enemy. Uh, also, dairy cows have just have just calved, and have never been yoked. Are highly improbable <laughs> to leave their calves. It is a sad thing to ask the mothers to leave their young. So, uh, the cows would be in mourning because they have left the calves, and these cows have never been yoked. So. They don't even know what to do with a yoke. What, what do I do with this yoke? Just get it off me. Just moo, moo, shake, rattle. It's still on me. Uh, the priests were making it nearly impossible for this plan to work. So uh, they said, okay, if this foolish, foolhardy plan works, then it must have been from the God of Israel. Similar to how Elijah uh, poured water on the wood when he was battling the priests of Baal, making it seemingly impossible for, for the, the fire to light against the priests of Baal. Pour more water on it! Make it douse more water on it! Make it fill the trench! And then the fire licked up the, the water in the trench. So, uh, the, the cows were lowing as they went, mourning the loss of their calves. Uh, so we're talking about, this is 1 Samuel 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 7, let's, let's see, let's see, here we go, last thing I was reading is Leviticus, let's see, uh, One, two. Uh, so on my drawing screen, it's at 5.6 dB. I 
have no mic on the screen. I have no mic on the Bible screen. Hold, please. Copy. Mic. There we go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Good day, down under with Holy Ghost Thunder. <laughs> Pardon my horrible Australian accent. It's been a while, Artsy. How you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm I'm well. Praise to God. Thunderbolts and lightning. Very very frightening. Be well. Okay, awesome. It helps if you actually add a mic to the screen that you're speaking on. That's the very first time that I've used this uh, Bible Gateway screen. Let's go back to drawing, shall we? So anyway, that that uh, that whole thing showed me that. Uh, like, I, I never thought of it twice before that, uh, you know, that's what you do with a cart. You put it on a yoke, and you put some animals under the yoke, and uh, uh, you, you make the, the animals pull it and take it where you want it to go. Uh, it, wasn't a, it was not a cattle drive. They weren't uh, directing the cows where they wanted it to go. Uh, so, yeah. The Lord was showing his hand to the, the Philistines. Even the way that uh, the, that God allowed the allowed the ark to be captured is similar to the way that Jesus allowed himself to be crucified. Because as the song says. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and me.